Sandy Smith arrives with Debbie at the Tuscany Tavern. A table large enough for six people has been arranged for you. I hope that will do. Yes, that's perfect. Steve and his family should be arriving in 20 minutes. So you are focused on punctuality, eh? I just hope all goes well. I had a feeling he wouldn't show up. Mother, why don't you try calling him? Maybe he had a flat tire or some other mishap with his car? I hope everything goes well. So what did you tell her about her birth mother? Just that she lied to me about being single and then abandoned me and went back to her husband. She used me as a sperm donor because her husband was infertile. Right, and then her husband divorced her anyway. For another woman who never wanted children. What an idiot she was. I'm so glad we talked about our plans for a family before we tied the knot. I think that's the restaurant ahead. So, are you boys ready? Yes, father. I can't wait to meet our big sister. I hope she's nice. Welcome to the Tuscany Tavern. Steve Miller and family, I presume? That is correct. We are here to meet my daughter, Debbie. Debbie, allow me to introduce you to my family. This is my wife, Georgia, the mother of our two boys. Hello, Debbie. And these are my sons. Jacob is the one in black, and Jason is the one in yellow. Hi, Debbie. Uh, hi. It's good to meet all of you. Let's eat. Father, now that we have met our sister, is she going to live with us in Tulsa? Uh, that's something we would have to work out with Debbie and with Sandy Smith. Legally, Sandy is Debbie's mother, not Georgia, your mother. Sandy and her husband, Richard, chose me to be their daughter. At the time, your father wasn't even married and was not wanting kids yet. I can certainly have a relationship with all of you. But Sandy is the one I will always call my mother because I know she loves me. Exactly. I am happy just knowing you are being loved and taken care of by a good woman. Unlike my ex who literally screwed me over for selfish purposes. You and your big mouth, Jacob. Now you have ruined the moment. Debbie and I have gotten used to life in Fort Worth. But I wouldn't mind her spending summers at your home in Tulsa, Steve. That seems only fair. Sandy, I understand you are a lawyer. Maybe we could draw up a legal document defining the custody arrangements between you and Steve so we can always know where, and with whom, Debbie belongs. Sure. Let's all go to my house and work everything out. So here are the terms of the custody agreement. Debbie and I have signed it. Now it is your turn. Yes, this is acceptable. You are actually being quite generous in being willing to share Debbie with me. I will sign this too. I will file this document at the Fort Worth City Hall and then mail you a copy for your own records. How do you feel about having brothers? I sometimes wish I had a brother or sister, but my mother's made the choice to stop at one. Overpopulation issues, they said. It's just something I have to get used to. Before I met them, you were the closest thing I had to a sister, Carrie. Uh, does that mean we have two sisters? No, silly. It means they're best friends. Girls do form a de facto sisterhood among themselves. So how old are you two? I'm six and Jason is four. People often mistake us for twins, but I never wear glasses and always try to wear a different color from my brother. Because I am my own person, not just his sidekick. So not only will Steve have custody of me for the summer months, but for the rest of the year while I live with you he will pay you $1,000 a month in child support. How did you talk him into that? I didn't. 
He offered me that money to compensate me for the loss of your adoptive father and to gain my trust. He's a much better man than I thought he would be. Maybe in a different reality, I could have married him. And been your actual birth mother. Perhaps. But I am happy with the arrangements that were made. And that you agreed to them for my sake. I love you, mother. <laughs>